Welcome to Debut. My name is Bob Gelati. We have a couple of very special guests tonight with some very special instruments if you haven't heard already. Uh, sitting next to me, Tony Vaca and Gene Butler. Welcome to Debut. Thanks. Nice to be here. Tony, what the heck is that? Before this... I even to ask about you, what's okay. that? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. This is uh, an instrument called Mbira. Yeah. It's, a, it's an ancient instrument, really. Mm -hmm. um, it was often used uh, in South Africa, in the, the place that is now the country South Africa, as well mm -hmm. as the whole region. People use it every, from every, as a, um, a lullaby instrument, as a uh, soundtrack for telling stories and history. Mm -hmm. It was something that both hypnotized and completely um, drew people's attention to what was being said. It's one of those very deep sounds that people use to pass on essential, important information. And as a player not from there, I, first, from the very first time I heard the Mbira, I just right. was drawn to it. Wanted to use it, wanted to play it, feel how I could use it in, this, in a similar way, but in a different way. So if you're looking for what is this, Mbira, and if you really get serious, Mbira Zavatsimu means notes from the ancestors. I'm not even going to try to repeat that. No, no, don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> Dude, I know I'd mess it up. <laughs> so uh, this instrument and the ones behind us that we're going to be uh, playing tonight, uh, tell us about how you learned about these instruments. Uh, really, we're going to go back, sure. I guess, to your, your first African experience and, okay. and start with that, I guess. Well, I mean, if you're a drummer in America, and especially if you see yourself, say, a, a jazz drumming, mm -hmm. in that part of the, the tradition of drumming, then the first thing you've got to realize is it's a big world. And the so-called American slice of, of being a jazz drummer, your part is to actually embrace the world, embrace who we are as Americans. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very multicultural society, always has been. It's not a new thing. Right. Um, and so... As a drummer, I wanted to sort of connect with my family of drummers. I wanted to know more about the world I lived in, and I wanted it to—I wanted my music to sound like that, like I knew where I was on planet Earth, like I knew my place here. So I always thought of myself playing not so much as an American drummer, as a drummer in America, mm -hmm. and and reflecting our the depth and the uh, the richness of our of, of our culture as a multicultural society. So you started playing the drums when you were just a, a so here young I am, boy. Yeah, here I am playing my <laughs> drums, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm playing the Beatles. I'm playing, okay. you know, and I hear my parents playing the music of Basie and Ellington and Big Sam Band. Cooke yeah. and Ella mm -hmm. Fitzgerald. I'm, I'm hearing it. It isn't my music, but I get it. It's right, good. Right. I hear that it's good, and I'm, you know, doing my drums. And my dad comes along one day and says, "How you doing? Oh, I'm doing. I'm playing pretty good, Dad. Play this. You know, take the A train." Yeah. I'm busted. <laughs> yeah. So from that moment on, I realized, uh, you know, I, I need to not only deepen my sense of what the music is, right. but really go far beyond what I thought I was going to do with music. Mm -hmm. my, my dad just pointed out that my world was smaller than I thought it was. He didn't mean any harm. In fact, he did a lot of good with that. And from that moment on, I started thinking, let me, let me play from an American perspective, but let me know the world. Let, let, let it sound like I know the world. And... It didn't take too long before, uh, after finishing college, I took it literally. I wanted to take my skills to West Africa, not so much to dare anybody, but to jump in that pool mm -hmm. of sound <clears throat> and to see what my peers were doing and right. how I'd fit. Mm -hmm. Which it turns was, out very nicely, though. It, it turns out very nicely, <laughs> but all you need there is some skill and an open mind. Mm -hmm. If yeah. one of those are missing, it's not going to work out. Well, the open mind is very important. The open mind is the most important part. Because once I got there and heard how people played, right. then I knew I fit, even though I didn't know what they were playing specifically. Yeah. They would call out a rhythm. They all knew it. I had to learn those rhythms. Not so much to be a player, uh, to be a, a player of African music. I really was trying to deepen and enrich my being a player in America. And this was part of that. Um, mm -hmm. I saw American society and the players who created jazz. This was a direct connection to African traditions, and yet an inno innovation that it was uniquely American. So mm -hmm. that was an easy, uh, an easy and irresistible doorway for me to go through. I feel like I'm neglecting the person to your right here. Uh, Jean Butler, how are you? I'm, I'm great. <laughs> We're about seven minutes into the interview, and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, you know, I need to really bring her in. Tony, you're very fascinating, but, you know, if you just can't let her sit there. No, we got to jump It's in. his patchouli. <laughs> How do you two know each other? 
long time ago, mm -hmm. I was hiring Tony. I was a parent volunteer at my children's school, and I was hiring Tony to come in and do arts and education programming. Mm -hmm. And it just took off from there? Well, I decided that um, I needed to do something very special. Sure. As my parting legacy at the elementary school where my three children went. This was K through six when you it's brought K through Tony six in elementary to do some school for the kids. Great. And so I took my PTO budget for three years and very carefully hoarded it and you know juggled things and managed to get an individual classroom sized workshop wow. for every single class in the whole school. Okay. Took three years worth of PTO budget, but we managed to do it. And um, then as Tony finished up and my youngest was finishing up uh, and graduating, uh, there was no more parent volunteer position for me. And I called Tony and said that over 15 years I had developed some skills, skill sets that I thought he could really use to further his arts and ed education programming and uh, he should hire me. And it was he did. Convincing. It was convincing. <laughs> I was like, ah. so you graduated from six. six yeah, I graduated from six, elementary then. school <laughs> and, moved, and uh, moved right into um, representing. Yeah, yeah, one artist, Tony. And we talked about uh, talked about this earlier, but you were over in Africa. And specifically, you were in Senegal. Is yeah. that, that 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 were you playing most of the time when you go over there? Or? By coincidence of the people I got to know. Right, right. Um, that's the way it works in so, life. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it, it was one of those things. I traveled uh, right out of college extensively through West Africa, mm -hmm. but by virtue of being asked to open up a concert for Baba Mal, who's one of the real giants of. West African music, mm -hmm. African music in general, but he's uh, from Senegal, so he right. is an icon in Senegal, and uh, I got asked to open up for one of his concerts, and next thing you know, I'm getting an invitation from Baba. I'm really happy about that, and I go, uh, and, and eventually wind up uh, learning to play tom and drum uh, to add to sort of the repertoire of instruments that I was interested in, and uh, his Tama drummer, Masamba, takes me under his wing, uh, and for about a month, I'm studying Tama drum. And at the end of that month, I bring my balaphone, the African xylophone behind us, and the Tama drum, and play with Baba <laughs> live to the nation, like like sitting in with the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Wow! And you said uh, in, in the uh, when we were in the green room, so to yep. speak, which is actually this room as well. Yep. We use it for everything. But you were talking about the fact that these guys to Africa or Senegal, at least, are what Springsteen, Springsteen or Bruce Springsteen is to oh, America. Oh, right? they, they are. They're that huge. Yeah, they're they're <clears throat> they're giants for one thing. Mm. Uh, Baba Mal, especially more than any other uh, musician I know, mm -hmm. is a cultural icon. He is um, he is a, a stinks in a spiritual manner, and and yet his music is rocking. I mean, it's very powerful business, and people recognize him there as as doing exactly this. It's not me, just an opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, people hear his voice, and he's speaking. His group was called uh, Dande Lenyol, Voice of the People, and uh. and it was. It was social commentary sure. about the place, uh, uh, the place of Africa and Africans right here, right now, mm -hmm. and yet very connected to to the the distant ancient past and to and to the immediate future. And to this day, Baba now is the UN's uh, youth emissary uh, for the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. representing the United Nations. He's a giant, and you know, like wow. like Bruce Springsteen, speaks to uh, the cultural. Mm, values of a people in a nation, in a region, and they recognize him. And so to play with Baba, yeah, that was, that was special. Maybe people in America, you know, don't know him as well as in Africa, but he is one of the giants. So lucky me to, to get that shot. Mm -hmm. And now, Gene, you started off, as we just talked about, you, you had Tony come in, your, your kids were in school there, and you grown also in terms of what your mission was and what you wanted to do because now you have a, a bevy of artists, correct? That, right. That you're representing, and you have your own company, which is a. a do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Or sure. <clears throat> we are a registered nonprofit, 501c3. Mm -hmm. Our company is Arts Are Essential. Arts Are Essential. Yes. Okay. And you have a yeah. website? Yes, we do. It's arts a r e, arts dash a r e essential. Dot org. And the vehicle is to have arts be a vehicle for education? We yeah. like to do arts and education programming right. and we really encourage people to think of that 
you can teach anything with the arts. Sure. With, no matter what the subject matter is, uh, you can talk about the social studies, the global um, citizenship, um, language arts. You know, that's, that's really big. And you've taken, uh, well, the two of you, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll say, have taken groups yes. over to Africa. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience of, you know, who who signs up for that and mm -hmm. what's their experience like and when do they get out of it? That's, I guess. I mean, maybe you're, you're sort of going back to near the beginning of when we were working right. together mm -hmm. where Jean was saying, I, I would like to uh, be a booking agent for uh, for a small handful of artists. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was uh, going on these trips to Senegal because Bob had invited me. Right. So <clears throat> this was a perfect moment. And Jean wanted to go on this trip and very boldly went, saw an opportunity to not only uh, observe what was happening artistically, but saw right. as, as an arts nonprofit what she might accomplish. And so she instigated her arts nonprofit with that more or less in mind. Meanwhile, I was always seeing the music as, as a doorway, uh, an attractor, uh, sure. a doorway into global citizenship, mm -hmm. like like it always has been. Sure, um, you hear you hear jazz, you hear world music, you hear Baba Mal, you hear whoever you hear, you start s feeling that connection that everybody has when the music plays. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it, for me, it became an opportunity to create collaborations uh, with some of the players in Baba's band and others I, I met there. So I would invite them to uh, to come to America, and Jean very boldly said, "Okay, let's do this." Uh, so, because she had her nonprofit, she was booking artists, and I said, "I want to bring these guys from Senegal." Music is for thousands of years has always had a unique uh, and intimate relationship with human beings in, in how we relate to music. Exactly. And can I, I think now, and now we talk about the, the globalization of the world, and, <clears throat> and really, music is, a, is one of the common languages that can, can bring us together. It's about the most powerful force I can <clears throat> think of mm -hmm. to just call up our, the, the depths of our humanity. You play, and we start dancing, and we start looking at each other and go, yes. Uh, you know, that, that's a, a very powerful force, much needed, um, especially now. It's not new, but right. when, when you are in the midst of this force, when I get a chance as a musician to bring what I've learned as an American player then, and jump into these settings in West Africa, see how they play with their master players there and bring what, what I have to offer, this changes the way I saw my world. Uh, you know, sometimes I go uh, on these trips and people say, so why are you playing African music? And I said, no, no, wait, you have the wrong idea here. When I go to West Africa, they don't say, here's Tony playing African music. They say, here's Tony, apparently knows a little something about African music. Sure. He's clearly, obviously, an American player. Mm -hmm. And that's the context that I want to be seen in. That's exactly why I was going. Not to be a player in Africa, but to go to Africa to see, feel, participate in how they hear and see their music. And they see it as a, as a way to uh, underscore the connection of one person to another, the power of a culture to, to set you on a path, and how music strengthens them to take on the big challenges they have uh, environmentally and socially like, like we do. <clears throat> so yeah, this was a very, very exciting thing. And to have Jean say yes, she wanted to apply her nonprofit that way, that opened up some, some very big doors. And Jean, once again, what, what's, what, what is the, uh, the website if people want to get more information around the, the nonprofit? It's arts, A-R-T-S yeah. dash A-R-E uh -huh. dash essential dot org. Dot org, okay. Right, right. And what will they find on the site? We'll <coughs> find a list of our artists that we represent. We have a very small select group of artists. And you will find some history of the Senegal America Project trips oh, that we've taken and uh, how people can help. Tony and I are co-directing the Senegal America Project trips mm -hmm. and what we do is offer basically two different kinds of trips. One is where we take students to Senegal to develop awareness of other cultures and how they can become meaningful citizens in, the, in their coming soon to be adult life. Mm -hmm. And the other one is what Tony calls Projects and Visions which is more of a professional development trip for families or artists or educators or we even had someone from the Department of Justice who went one mm -hmm. time wanting oh, wow. to compare the justice system there with, with our justice mm -hmm. system here. 
and uh, we do a lot of learning and dancing and drumming and so it's basically anyone and everyone who right. comes with us. They may have a mission or a goal or a vision and they may not. Right. They may develop it as they get there. The, um, the really neat thing is that no one goes home untouched. Sure. Mm. Tony mm. has a saying that you can only go and observe once. <laughs> and for me, that was 1998, and I knew that I was going back. It took us until 2005 to get our act together to run the project trip. Right. Mm. So that was our first trip that we <clears throat> took people over to Senegal to experience the culture, the Taranga. Well, you know, to, to really get the full impact of what Jean and I have managed to do together, uh, I think I would talk about the two teachers that, that mm -hmm. asked to go. I, I had performed at their school. Uh, Jean had set all that up, and they saw me playing with Masamba from Senegal. They quickly saw the connection and our friendship, which was long, uh, long-term friendship, and um, they just couldn't resist. They were like, wait a minute, you go and you make recordings, you, you make collaborations with musicians there, then you bring that back here. We want to see that. We want to go. We're social studies teachers, mm -hmm. you know, and they were young guys and adventurous right. guys. So I said, okay, you know, I'll get you back here alive, but you want to really be ready for this trip. They, they took it on. Yeah. And not only did they go, they, they went with a, a, an idea that from their experience, they wanted to shape their social studies courses at their middle school. And they did as a team. And pretty soon, very soon, their students by the end of the year started clamoring f to go. And so here are other students saying, we saw that you, you taught us from your travel, from your trip. What if we went? You're talking global citizenship. We want to act it out. And so that, that question came up. Gene and I said, let's, let's try to help them do this. Let's make this happen. And my admonition to them was, if you're going to go on this trip, I know you want to do good things or I know you want to start some projects, but I want you to also go with what do you want from them? If you go and just say, we came with some help, it's not, it's not as powerful as we came to help and be helped. We came mm -hmm. to give and get. Right. So they, uh, they brought mosquito nets. This, tri this group has gone on three trips, 10 students each time, right. and each trip has brought, brought 1,000 mosquito nets to hand out free. Uh, they brought a lot of school supplies. And what they've started is a kind of international uh, bond. They came back with, with lasting friendships. They, they literally saved lives. They literally changed lives. And some of the lives that were changed were theirs. And this was global citizenship at its best. And I, I just, when it happened, I wondered why I hadn't thought of that happening myself. And it, the mosquito nets, obviously, they're one of the oh. greatest health care concerns is, 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 a, is a malaria or? Yes. Malaria. Yes. <clears throat> Every 30 seconds on the continent of Africa, a child dies from malaria. And, and it's preventable. And it's not, in, in Senegal, it's not so much that, in this case, it's not so much that uh, you show up there and, and feel you're in the middle of a jungle with mosquitoes. This is because the rainy season creates f little mini floods. And this right. is because there's no uh, infrastructure for drainage. Right. So it's very preventable. But for the moment, the most important thing you can do, from my point of view, is bring the mosquito net to, to interrupt that process while the city and the nation works on its infrastructure to deal and with floods. And I did some reading on that, is in that you're right, that the, the quick fix is the mosquito net, but when they get a proper irrigation system in, Absolutely. that is the larger term project. But and once again, it's true. that takes a lot more uh, money and manpower, probably, to get that underway, engineering and... Right. Yeah, <clears throat> we're, right. we're, we're at the... Let's do what we can do. Right, because if you said, if someone's passing on every 30 seconds, right. then oh. let's do something right. now. What can the, we do right now? The oh. interesting thing about the mosquito nets is that the, they are insecticide treated. Mm -hmm. And so what you have is uh, two layers of protection for mm -hmm. the people. And you have them under the nets so that they can't get bitten at night. But you also have the insecticide on the netting itself so that it actually is killing some of the mosquitoes. So it's reducing the population to a certain degree. Right. Mm -hmm. um, malaria is a very difficult disease, mm -hmm. very difficult, very transitory and changing. Sure. And yeah, difficult to, uh, to pin down and, and to, to, to cope with, or, you know, 
to well not diagnose but to really get a you know get their arms oh, around it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, <clears> at the same time, the, the life affirming side of the project, you know, bring the music, create the collaborations. Mm -hmm. This this creates a, an attraction to people that people feel to watch and see what's going on. Uh, the opportunities go extend to musicians from Senegal coming to America, doing concerts here, and then we bring the concerts into the schools, and so what's, this is full cycle collaboration in a sense, where I'm going there to develop my music and work with them. They come here to mm -hmm. develop their music and, and set up a tour, and then by coming here, teachers want to go there, and so you have educational programs started that wouldn't have started. You have uh, health initiatives, we have uh, a nurse that was part of the of this trip that then took on a big assignment mm -hmm. and did uh, uh, health care screenings for diabetes and high blood pressure. So I mean, as much as the project from my point of view started as I want to play with my music buddies and I want to make some recordings, it quickly grew to from friendships to into a, a much bigger mm, kind of uh, interactive project mm -hmm. where by knowing each other's families we understood what their challenges were and mm, surprising or not their list of challenges is ours mm -hmm. they would say we need more health care that sounds like us right we, we need to work on our <laughs> on our infrastructure sounds like us, sounds like us yeah. we need to work on our education the quality of education uh-huh so it, it once again <clears throat> What would seem to be their problems are also ours, and the music is a, a way for us all to help each other help each other. And that is, that's, I can't think of a better thing to do with the music I play or with my time here on earth. You know, this is. Well, it sounds like it's time well spent. Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> so, what, you know, speaking of music, I'm, I'm dying to hear some music. So, I'm why don't we take a, uh, a quick set break to get Tony back here with me? to explain a couple of instruments and, and get him uh, hitting those uh, drums, okay? So we're watching debut, we'll be back in a moment.